Welcome to this video in the Battle of the Raw Converter. So let's take a look here today at Adobe Camera Raw and Affinity Photo and the Raw Conversion between the two. So I'm opening up five photos from my family vacation that have now opened up an Adobe Camera Raw. And I'm going to go ahead and make some edits to them and see if we can make much difference in quality. Now, in fairness, to be uh, comparable, I'm going to go ahead and make only global edits and see if they make much difference between one or the other. I'm going to go ahead and turn my highlights down here to recover some of the highlights in the sky and in the lighthouse. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my shadows to about, a, well, let's try up to 100. 100 is a bit much. And 100 is probably more than I would typically do when I do an adjustment mask. Let's go ahead and make it 100 on the shadows. Looking pretty good there. And maybe bump up the exposure just a tad to 0.25, quarter stop, and see how that's going to look like looking there. Let's go ahead and look at Affinity. Some problems. I did find that the raw files opened like 10 times slower in Infinity than they did in Adobe Camera Raw, just to be fair. Go ahead and bump it, 0.25 on the exposure. Let's turn our sh uh, shadows, our highlights down all the way and bump our shadows all the way. And you can see that we're losing some of the quality definitely and the shadows don't look as nice. And it's converting from where it was to there. We can see in the file, this just looks better. The conversion in Infinity is better. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a bit. Zoom in there. That's 100%. Open up Infinity at 100%. We don't really care so much about the lighthouse. We really want to see the quality of the photo. And the raw conversion software, at least in this preview stage, does not look very good. We'll do a final test here in a little bit and do the conversion. But right now, this is not even apples to apples comparison in terms of quality. As all I've done is change everything equally in the exposure and in the shadows and go from there. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a see, is it, eh, is it exposure differences? I'm not so sure. We'll see. So Adobe definitely winning there. Let's go ahead and take another look at another picture. This one has some blown out skies. The shirt's a little bit bright. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Let's go ahead and turn in our shadows and highlights. Turn the highlights all the way down. I'm not quite that far down, maybe negative 50. Let's do a negative 50 in fairness. Pump up our shadows, maybe 20. And let's try doing some saturation of this. Let's call the shadows and saturation. I like the good old number of 13. The shadow and the saturation and the vibrance. You can go ahead and do a saturation of 13. 13. So the highlights, negative 50. And the shadows is 20. Saturation's up, saturation's up. Let's see what the raw file looks like here. So in this one, I'm going to turn my highlights down a bit. And just bump up my exposure, not touching the shadows, because I don't want to see maybe the shadows is the weak filter. Let's bump it up a stop. there go to negative on the shot on the highlights on my roses flowers my hydrangeas we'll go up a stop negative highlights up of my shadows like 20. Maybe add my saturation 13, saturation 13, 